With just a couple lines of CSS, you can take your page transitions from something boring like this to something more like an in-app experience where when you click on these elements, they rearrange themselves as it transitions from one page to the other. This effect is thanks to view transitions. And while we can't do this directly in Generate Blocks, it's just a couple lines of CSS to get things working just like you saw today. I'm positive that anybody can do it. Now, not every browser supports this feature, but it is a progressive enhancement. What I mean by that is for anybody who's using a browser that doesn't support this view transitions effect, they just won't see the animation, but everything will continue to work and function just like it should. If you're interested in checking out how this is done, then stick around and let's get started. So all I've done so far is set up a couple pages. We have our services page here, which lists our three services. And then for each one of those services, I created a page that would have all the content about that service. So the first thing we need to do is give a unique class to all the elements that share between these two pages. So if we go back here and we're gonna work on this search engine optimization one, we can see we have a title here, a description and an image. And on the single page for it, we also have the title, the description, and the image. So it'd be great to be able to transition between all three of these elements. Now, in order to do that, we need to give each one of these their own unique class that matches. So the title needs to match the title on both pages and so on and so forth. So what I'm gonna do is just go to this title first and under advanced, under our additional classes, I'm gonna give this a class starting with VT for view transition. This is our SEO page, so I'll put in SEO. And now I can give a name for the element. I'm just gonna call this title. So same for the description here. I wanna do VT hyphen SEO hyphen description. It doesn't matter what name you give these classes. I just thought it'd be good to be explicit here so I would know exactly what I'm working with. So for this last one, we'll do VT SEO image. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this last class and we're gonna go back into our services page and we need to add matching classes for each one of these as well. So here on the image, I'm just gonna paste in that class. For the description, we'll paste that in, but change image to description. And for the title, we'll go ahead and paste that in and change image to title. Now we'll go ahead and save this here. And now we can go take a look at the site on the front end. Now we've added these classes here, but we haven't done any CSS yet, so nothing looks any different right now. So let's just go ahead and jump into the customizer and we can start writing a bit of CSS. The first thing we need to do to set up our view transitions is set up at view hyphen transition and open and close our curly brackets. Now inside of here, we're gonna type in navigation colon auto and we're gonna go ahead and save this because just with this one bit of CSS, we're gonna see something happening different on the site. So now when I click into any of these pages, you can see they're kind of smoothly fading one from the other. Before it was a real stark reload, but now we kind of see this smooth transition. It happens over about a quarter of a second, but it gives a nice little effect here. You could honestly add this to a site with just that one line of CSS and have a pretty nice effect. But we actually wanna zoom in to each one of these elements. So let's jump back into the customizer here. What we need to do is set a view transition name for each one of our elements we gave a class to. So that first one was VT hyphen SEO title, and we'll open and close our curly brackets. Now what we wanna do in here is write view transition hyphen name, and then we just need to give this a name. It doesn't matter what name you give it, but just to make sure that it's clear, I'm gonna match the name of the class here. So we're gonna call this VT hyphen SEO hyphen title. Now let's go ahead and save these changes and jump back out of the customizer. We'll make sure to refresh here. Now, if we've done this correctly, we should see this title here, zoom in to the top of the page where we have that matching class on the single page for search engine optimization. So let's go ahead and click the button and we can see that title zoomed right into place at the top of the page. Here, I'll just click the back button on my mouse and we can see it goes back into place down here. So now in order to get each one of these to have that same effect, we'll just jump into the customizer and give each one of those classes a view transition name. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this first one here. We'll paste it in here and we're gonna change title to description. And down here in our name, we'll give this description as well. We'll paste that in one more time and we'll change this from title to image. And here we'll make sure this says image. We'll go ahead and publish those changes jump out of the customizer, refresh, and now we should see each one of these three elements transition. 
So you can see the image, the title, and the description all move from their original place down here in the card up to their new place on this page as we go from one page to the next. This gives a nice effect like we're inside of an app rather than just going from one page to the other. It's almost like we're zooming into this card and opening it up. Now, just like I promised, this effect is not hard to achieve, but it is a little bit time consuming. What would be really great is to set this up in your blog loops, but that gets a little bit more complicated because when you're setting up a loop inside of Generate Blocks, you can't actually grab each one of the images and titles independently and give them their own class because they're just being looped through. We would probably need some JavaScript that adds classes to each one of these elements, but I haven't gone that far down the rabbit hole yet. But just transitioning smoothly from one to the other is just the tip of the iceberg. You can actually get in there and set up keyframe animations, change the duration, and do all kinds of really neat things. I'll make sure to put a link down in the description below on a deep dive video Kevin Powell did, where you can really see how all this works and start to tinker with it even further. Like with most animation effects, you're probably going to want to use this sparingly and not overdo it. Plus, you're probably going to want to wrap this inside of a prefers reduced motion media query to make sure anybody who's bothered by all that motion, if they have their browser set to prefers reduced motion, they won't have any of these effects on their website. Everything will still function perfectly. Hopefully you got something out of today's video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.